of quality writers. And so, I mean, that is part of the reason why they're going with Marvel, because Marvel does have, you know... But what can Marvel do if Sony is pretty much putting a rubber stamp on everything? I don't know. And all I can hope is that Marvel, you know, literally goes off and says, hey, listen, you want to go off and do this movie? We're doing it our way now. Yes, you're paying for it, but if we can walk away. See, and I, I, I think I asked you this last week. Is it worth... You know, putting up with this garbage just to bring Spider-Man into Captain America. You know what? You know, I think Marvel believes so because they really want to be able to use him going forward. But can can the fans honestly see this type of character going with Captain America? And with Iron Man and the Hulk and Thor. Here's the thing, though. Spider-Man was a member of the Avengers, he was a member of the Avengers, and he was a member of the new Avengers. So, I mean, he will fit in there. But will this character fit in? Only time will tell. I mean, and that's kind of the sad you know, thing is we, we have to now kind of trust that Sony, you know, now that they've got their way and got the actor they want, is going to go off and back up and let Marvel do what they do best, and that's make magic. And see, the other fear is... When Spider-Man joins Marvel, uh, the Avengers, how much rubber stamp does Sony have on that? Too? Honestly, at that point, they're probably going to have nothing because they won't have any part of those movies. They are financing this movie, but the problem Disney being is Disney won't let them anywhere near anything else that Marvel does. But Sony has the ability to turn around and say, "Nope, we're walking." We're pulling our character back. They could try, but I think by that point, uh, it would probably be cheaper just to let you know Marvel do that because Marvel would just take them to court. And we all know how Marvel takes people to court. No one walks away a winner. No, no one walks away a winner, especially when you consider that they have the juggernaut known as Walt Disney backing them up. Zombie Walt Disney. Zombie Walt Disney. I actually might be cool if they did some of the zombie Marvel movie, you know. See, speaking of zombies, they are, I don't know if anyone out there is a Walking Dead fan, but a lot of people have been questioning if they were ever going to show how it all started. There is a new TV show coming out. It's called Fear the Walking Dead. It explains everything from the ground up of how it all started. You won't see any of the beloved characters. I've seen a lot of previews. I've seen a lot of hype about it. It sounds like it's going to be worth watching. You know, I'm all for it. I want to see how it all started. This is what everybody's been waiting for. And Under the Dome starts on Thursday. So we were going to do another podcast on Thursday, but it probably won't be till Friday because I cannot miss the season premiere. That's a Stephen King fanatic. Can't miss it. Okay, and I'm just sort of looking through this. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, Marvel and DC notes. Uh, probably more DC than Marvel. T- uh, there's probably about four times as, you know, three or four times as much Marvel here as DC. Uh, I'm thinking I might just skip over some of this stuff because we're already about halfway through the podcast. I would like to point out before we, or uh, bring up before we move on to our other big discussion. Uh, Ewan McGregor is open to doing another Star Wars movie. Uh, he he would love to be able to do a movie that kind of explains what Obi Wan Kenobi was doing uh, in the years between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. See, I think it's too soon to be talking another spinoff movie. Well, I mean, this would of course be you know down the line, but I'm not sure where they really can go because you know. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I mean, pretty much he goes to Tatooine to kind of oversee, you know, Luke Skywalker's safety uh, for the next 20 years. Yeah, he, he pretty much lived a hermit how much, life. How much could they really show? I mean, he's, other than, you know, him fighting a lot of, you know, a bunch of sand people and maybe some Jawas. I'm not, I, I, I think they're trying to milk the industry way too much, way too fast. But, I mean, this has been a rumor for a long time, uh, Mark, um, Star Wars and Disney have been talking about this for for a couple months now of how they would like to do this at some point, but wasn't sure if Ewan McGregor would be up to it. Ewan McGregor says that he is willing to do it as long as he doesn't have the hilt 
a uh, lightsaber like the villain in uh, The Force Awakens. And that was kind of meant to be a bit of a joke. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there was another rumor you wanted to talk about? Um, yeah. Just give me a second here. I'm going to open up the notebook one more time. Hawk Girl. Uh, there actually had been talk about, uh, over the weekend, um, for those people who, um, follow DC's, uh, TV shows, there had been talk that Hawk Girl, uh, would have its own spinoff, uh, a Syra Renee, I believe her name is, uh, she will be playing, uh, the, the character in the upcoming series Legends of Tomorrow, which, uh, will be coming out next January. On Netflix. Um, no, it won't be on Netflix. You're thinking Marvel. Marvel's, right, right. Mar- uh, Marvel's doing a bunch of... That will be on uh, uh, the same channel that uh, Flash and uh, Arrow are on. But that has been completely debunked. Uh, there is no truth to that whatsoever. Uh, there, But speaking of uh, Legends of Tomorrow, they have done... DC has released a video... Uh, about Legend of Tomorrow's Rip Hunter, th- about the character, the origins of the character, and everything. Uh, and it's interesting because the character is played by Arthur Darville, who, you know, uh, fans of Doctor Who would better remember as one of Matt Smith's uh, Doctor's companions, Rory Williams. Speaking of DC, Lex Luthor is uh, Jesse I- Eisenberg is confirmed to be at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, presumably in costume. And presumably in costume. Uh, I'm going to um, move on because we really are running out of the time. So, uh, last night, uh, director Roland Amberich uh, went off and brought together uh, many of the cast members for uh, Independence Day 2, which has been given the name Resurgence. And they did a, a Q&A session. Uh, now, for uh, Roland Emmerich, actually was the director for the original Independence Day. He also is uh, well known for The Day After Tomorrow and the, 19, eight, the 1998 version of Godzilla. Which was by far one of my favorite versions of Godzilla. And he, he, wrote, he went off and he said that originally, you know, he fought the idea of ever making a sequel to this movie. But, you know, in recent years, he started to get these ideas for images that he wanted to be able to share with the fans of of the original Independence Day. So what happens is, a uh, background of this story is, it now is about 20 years later, uh, Earth is, you know, kind of more united than it's ever been. Uh, Jeff Goldblum's character, uh, David... Levinson is back, and he's now the director of Earth Space Defense. And what they've done is they've taken the alien technology and kind of hybrided it with their own technology in preparation for what they know will eventually be another invasion by these aliens. But uh, they are, won't be, you know, pr- as prepared as they would like to because this time the aliens send in the big guns. I, I am honestly surprised that Will Smith didn't sign on. And you know, honestly, I went off and I thought, oh, maybe, uh, maybe he just is going to have you know a cameo or something. I went on uh, you know IMDb.com to kind of you know do a little bit more research. I can't find his name at all attached. He, to this. he he wants nothing to do with it, which I don't understand. I think Independence I, was, I don't State- know if it's so much that he just wanted a part of it, or if you know it just didn't work. I'm I'm not really sure because it's funny because he's you know. Independence Day 2 has actually been, you know, rumored to happen in, for years, and Will Smith's name has been connected to it for years. And it's funny because uh, Vivia A. Fox, uh, who plays his wife Jasmine uh, in the movie, she's returning. And uh, Kind of interesting how they're going to play that Jesse one. Jesse Usher will actually be playing uh, the stepson of Will Smith's character, uh, Dylan... Hiller, who, you know, was, you know, just a little boy in the original movie. And so, it's, so, I mean, they, you know, so, Jasmine, you know, Dylan Hiller will be back, but his character is not back for this See, and and that's going to be interesting how they tie that in, because I think Will Smith was a key factor. That movie probably 
was a defining moment in his career. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I don't understand. Maybe you know he's he was holding out so that he can do Hancock too. See, but you know he did all the crappy, crappy sequels for Men in Black, and yes, yes, it was crappy. I thought the part two was good. Part three, part three, part three was, was awful. Sweet, but I mean, it was nowhere near as good as. The but original. you know, I don't understand why he wouldn't sign on for this. This is this is a movie that I think Will Smith was born for. He should have been in the sequel, Independence Day. I mean, I believe it wasn't like his you know first movie. He had done a a few before that, but this was the movie that really made him you know a this, superstar. This was, was the movie. That. This was the movie. I mean, he did. Bad Boys before that, where you know fans started seeing him as a bit of a sex symbol and everything, but it was Independence Day. I didn't. Well, obviously not. I didn't either. But you know, a lot of the ladies, the ladies had a lot more love for Will Smith after his because he didn't look like some geeky little looking guy with who always had his hand on backwards, you know, trying to you know talk all you know ghetto with Ebenezer. You know. So, or Ebonics, or I am sorry. But, um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I was a little puzzled by this. Maybe, you know, Will Smith is, you know, in the last couple of movies, he's tr- tended to take a little bit more serious you roles. Know, he started to do M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong movies, and I think that's pretty much been the nail in the coffin. Yeah, there's, it's, you know, I mean... The, the only Smith that seems to really be doing anything of any significance has been, you know, Jada Pinkett Smith. Yes. So... She, she, she wears the pants in the family. And, and, I mean, at one point, Will Smith admitted, I mean, his wife, when she was uh, doing uh, the Matrix sequels, she actually could bench press them. So, I mean, she, you know... I would pay to see that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so and but I mean he won't be back for this. But it's interesting. Uh, Brent Spiner, uh, who is back as uh, Doctor uh, Oaken, um, he was better known as uh, Commander Data on Star Trek: The Next Generation. And so it's kind of surprising because if you see, you remember the original, he's getting choked out by this alien. So you think, oh, he's dead, but he's not dead. He apparently is back, and his hair is more white and more crazy long. And he's just gonna oh, so like the Doctor from Back to the Future. Yeah, I suppose, but you know, I think you know he's gonna make Doctor Brown you know look sane. Oh God! Yeah, I should. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a scary thought. That's a, a scary thought. There's just it's interesting because uh, uh, other actors that are going to be in this Judd Hirsch. Who play? Um, he played Julius, the father to uh, Jeff Goldblum. He'll be back for this. So a, a lot of the same char- uh, um, same actors. Yeah, a lot back. of them are going to be back. Absolutely, Liam Hemsworth, uh, who is from the uh, Hunger Games series, he will be uh, uh, in this as well. And he's going to kind of play a a, a a pilot that kind of falls out of grace and ends up having to. Uh, uh, just um, draw, you know, fly people to the moon, and so, and so he's going to sort of, kind of be the the will the will taking like the Will Smith, you know, character in this one. I swear, one of these days, Bing Bang, straight to the moon. And apparently, it'll be straight to the moon. Uh, there's, I'm just looking at some the uh, others uh, in here. Uh, so. so Sela Ward, uh, best known for roles in The Fugitive and Day After Tomorrow. She'll be uh, President Lanford, who is apparently going to be a much more aggressive uh, president than Bill Pullman played you, you, in the You first know what movie. I find funny in this movie, in, in the first movie? Somehow, the United States became rulers of the world. And see, you know, I mean, as Canadians, I, I think, you know... It, it's and sometimes it gets a little annoying because these movies are absolutely great, but you know sometimes it feels like you know they try a little bit too hard yeah. to go off. And, the you know, the put American only propaganda. time Canada's mentioned in a movie or TV show is to make fun of us, like you know The Simpsons coming up to I believe it was Winnipeg. I said you know, back to Winnipeg. Yeah, you know the free is the free drugs. Uh, just recently over the weekend. Um, I, 
under your skin or the animated movie 